holding up a finger, Alex, as if he was saying, next time that'll cost you a point. Gianfranco Rossi is, is very limited physically. I mean, he's a, a good natural athlete, but not a natural fighter. And uh, he's a guy who takes advantage smart, fought a great tactical fight against Van Horn, took advantage of everything that you let him get away with, including things over the line of the rules. You just have to penalize him to get his attention, as we said earlier. Well, as you also mentioned earlier, neither one of these guys being a noted one-punch knockout guy. There's a good chance that this fight might go the distance if that's the case. A deduction along the way could be injurious in a big way to either one of these guys. The last time these two fought and went to the scorecards, it was the unanimous decision for Rossi. And so far, Dan, Darren Van Horn on the right of your screen right now has been more aggressive than he was in the first fight, but he really has not put anything effective together in a sustained way. The closing seconds of the fourth round. One. Well, the fighters meet in the center of the ring. Dan, Darren Van Horn was up a good 15 seconds before the end of the round, and he spent 15 seconds into the rest period in the middle of the ring, walking around with his hands up in the air. And I think part of the reason, Dan, is what happened just at the end of the fourth round. Probably in a clash of heads, Gianfranco Rossi suffered a big cut in his scalp. Uh, midway back on the right side of his head. That is what's dripping blood right now. It is not the cut in his eye. And here is Rossi taunting Van Orn, saying, come and get it. And Darren Van Orn staying his ground in the center of the ring. And that's just what Rossi wants Van Horn to do. Get wild, lose his balance, and look foolish. Oh, some real hot dogging now by Gianfranco Rossi. Yeah, we, we've had everything here really but boxing. We've got a track meet, we've got a wrestling match, very little fighting. From ringside, we can make out the bleeding in Gianfranco Rossi's scalp, but it is not coming out of the hair. It's not working its way down. It looks like some sweat might be beginning to trickle out and carry some blood with it. So it's really difficult to tell the severity of the cut. There was a lot of blood at the end of the last round. And that should be rolled a slip. That's not a knockdown. And Randy Newman rolling it a slip and says, let's box. Of course, the crowd, that was as good as a knockdown as far as they're concerned. And again, there's Rossi hitting on the clinch, one and point. there's a one-point deduction. There's referee Randy Newman deducting a point from Gianfranco Rossi for hitting and holding. And here comes stuff flying out of the upper deck. And Lou Duva just wrapped me on the shoulder to remind me. Yeah, Lou, we saw it. This fight is scheduled for a dozen rounds. And again, there's Rossi hitting over the shoulder of Randy Newman, the referee. He's also smart enough to know that when you're taking a point away, you're reluctant to take another point away right away. So he's going to push that as far as he can. Well, there, Darren Van Horn was inside the position to throw a right hand to the body, throw a punch someplace, and didn't let his hands go. I think he's waiting for these clinches. Coming to the end of the fifth round. A little bit of everything here this afternoon. Good left hand by Rossi to close the round. Watch. Randy Newman signals for both fighters to move to the middle. And Randy Newman, between rounds, Alex, giving us a look like I wish I was someplace else. A very difficult fight to referee. And he got a mouthful from the Rossi corner, none of which he understood, but most of which he probably didn't want to. Their complaint was, don't break them when they're in close like this if they're punching. Again, a reminder that in the fifth round, Randy Newman, the referee, deducted a point from Gianfranco Rossi. Well, there's a good right, and then the left catches Van Horn on the chin. And I think, we'll have to wait till he comes around. Darren might have... No, nope. I thought he had a nosebleed the way he was pulling his nose. He's pulling his eye and his nose, but it doesn't seem to be any damage. 
Well, he caught his one, eye in his nose again. I, one thing, Alex, about the presence of Lou Duva, you can see Darren Van Horn periodically glance over to his corner. Pretty tough to miss Lou Duva, who's on his hands and knees. And Oh, and there's a good right hand again by Rossi that catches Van Horn. It's tough to miss Lou Duva anyway, Dan. You know, Darren, you can't judge how he's, whether he's affected by what he's doing in terms of his physical ticks because he's a guy who's been known to scratch his shoulder, to scratch his back. There he's pawing his nose, but I don't think that necessarily means that his nose is broken or it's bothering him at all. We'd like to remind our local ABC stations that at the end of this round that we're going to be taking a station break. This is round number six. Scheduled for 12 rounds for Gianfranco Rossi's IBF junior middleweight belt. Oh, and a good left hand on the separation there by Van Horn. Blood continues to trickle out of the scalp of Rossi, the champion. I don't know if Gianfranco has been inhibited by the cut he suffered, these two cuts he suffered early, one to the right eye, one to the scalp, but he certainly is far from the fighter he was when he fought Van Aaron the first time. There's another warning by Newman. Clearly, Rossi hit while the two fighters were clinched. I'm sure Darren Van Horn's corner, and Darren would tell us that's because Darren's a lot better, and he is improved, but you'd have to say Rossi just is not fighting anywhere as up to the uh, uh, ability that he showed a year ago. Again, just a... A wild, amateurish lunge by Rossi. Rossi looked at, Van, uh, at Randy Newman like, why did you break me? I was punching. ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring the IBF World Junior Middleweight Championship will continue after this word from your local ABC station. seventh round moving into the second half of this bout scheduled for 12 I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Swallow G and Franco Rossi on the left of your screen Darren Van Horn on the right Van Horn challenging for the belt that he used to own the IBF junior middleweight title Dan at the halfway point it's really been a lousy fight I mean neither man has established anything other than their ability to, to wrestle um, as they just fall into a clinch right there. Very little effective punching. I think impossible to score except for the first two rounds, which Rossi, to be clearly won the first and edged the second. Obviously, the one-point deduction in the fifth. The crowd but, reacting but, to the good right-hand counterpunch by Rossi. And now it's possible that uh, Randy Newman's going to have the doctor to, uh, maybe tape in the glove. I thought he might have the doctor take a look at the cut. Sending Van Horn over to the neutral corner. Some loose tape. We are in Marino, Italy, Randy. in the Palazzo del Ciaccio, Ciccio, which is an ice palace. And there's nothing inside this building right now, Alex, resembling ice. Very warm at ringside. Thus, you'll see some of that tape coming loose as it gets moist. I mean, just count the number of meaningful punches. I mean, it's just nothing happened. If anyone has to be taking heart from a fight like this, wouldn't you think it's Darren Van Horn, who really showed absolutely nothing in the first fight, saying to us yesterday he doesn't remember anything after taking that shot just 23 seconds into the bout that floored him. Well, I'm sure when he watched the tape, he, he wanted to have total amnesia if he didn't before, because he, he just didn't do anything. He's done a little bit more, but... The story here has been Rossi not being up to par rather than Darren making a huge improvement. But you're right, it is a much closer fight than the first one. And of course, Alex mentioned the difficulty in scoring this fight again. Yeah, I'm just saying it's a I'm saying it's a fight that's much closer, and I just said I, I have no idea how to score it, so don't take me as gospel. Well, I, I agree with you, and I know what you're saying. I mean, uh, you like to look at meaningful blows to use, and there you see Rossi and he's taking a count. Scoring this as a knockdown. And that's right. I mean, there was a punch, and his gloves hit the floor. That is a knockdown. Randy Newman scoring it a knockdown. So here in the seventh round, the first knockdown of the fight, Darren Van Horn puts Rossi to the canvas. And ironically, 
not from the punch that he's been trying to land for two fights, but I believe from a left hook. It was from a left hook. He's been trying to hit him with the right hand. It's a knockdown if you touch the canvas, if your gloves touch the canvas as a result of a punch. Well, finally, a meaningful blow in the end of the seventh. Eighth round here in Marino, Italy. Darren Van Horn, last round, knocking down Gianfranco Rossi, the champion. That was in round number seven. Keep in mind that in round number five, Rossi had a point deducted by referee Newman for hitting while they were clinched. So two rounds, two big rounds for Darren Van Horn, number five and number seven. In Rossi's corner, there is some concern, and uh, they told him, you've got to relax more. They also asked him, did the punch hurt? <laughs> Which is an unusual thing to ask a fighter. You never ask a fighter if a punch hurt. Well, there's a good stiff jab by Rossi. Got between the gloves of Van Horn. Again, Darren swinging wildly with that right and lunging off balance. Must be careful of the Rossi counterpunch. And now Van Horn coming over to have his tape put back in place. Very warm, very muggy here in this building. Yet Darren Van Horn, in my assessment, Alex, looking very much the fitter of the two fighters right now. Neither fighter looking overly fatigued, but Van Horn bouncing, maybe sensing in a being in a much favorable position than last time around. Yeah, Dan, I think last time around, it wasn't a matter of fatigue with Darren. His conditioning was fine. It was a matter of his skill. I mean, he just couldn't fight. I mean, he didn't fight, but he could, he didn't. And, uh, you know, that's the question for him here today. I don't think it's, I think he's in shape. The question is, can Darren Van Horn fight? And uh, he's given a little evidence that he can get better in the last fight, but that's damning with faint praise. Darren Van Horn, three semesters short of his degree from the University of Kentucky. Still lives in Lexington. But as you Turn. pointed out, on the basis of the knockdown and the point penalty, I mean, he should be very much in this fight. And in a position, if he can put something together here in the later round, to get his title back. A good exchange that excites the crowd. And now again, the tape is loose on the right hand of Van Horn, and Lou Duba comes up to anchor it again. For those people who think, yeah, big deal, these guys are getting hit with punches, what does a little tape mean? Just be assured that that piece of tape is being redone to help the other fighter, because if the end of that tape flicks into the opponent's eye, it can really cause him a problem. It has in the past. You have to stop the fight. It's also an unfair distraction. 